so freaking cool. This is awesome, man. Recently, when I visited Dallas Vintage Toys, the owner of the store, Sean, took me into the back room to show me an amazing piece that he had recently just picked up. This comes from an ex-LJN employee and is a really incredible piece of Gremlins history. But before we get into looking at that, I want to take a little bit of time to just talk about Gremlins. Now, I'm sure all of you know this by now, but Gremlins is one of those films that was sort of mismarketed to a child audience. And if you've seen the movie, while by today's standards probably doesn't seem too bad, definitely has moments in it that could be considered a little too disturbing for a younger audience. I mean, for example, all of the marketing for this particular movie really seemed to focus on Gizmo, this cute, cuddly, little furry character that kids would love. And then all of the parents across the country whisked their kids to the movie theaters upon launch and were completely mortified when they saw these evil gremlin creatures getting microwaved or melting down to their bones. I mean, yeah, you can see how this was a little bit of a swerve for audiences, especially moms and dads with very young children who thought they were taking their kids to see something a little more lighthearted, something a little more cute. You know, I've always been fascinated by the idea of toys being marketed to kids that are based on movies that are R-rated or not appropriate for kid audiences. And while Gremlins wasn't rated R, in fact, the funny story about it is that it was rated PG, really adding credence to the fact that this is probably fine for kids as long as you have parental guidance. Now, of course, as the story goes, once audiences were mortified after taking their children to this movie, Steven Spielberg actually rallied for a new rating to be created called PG-13. So it's because of movies like Gremlins and, of course, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, which was around the same time, that the PG-13 rating was even created. So it wasn't just the fact that the movie was rated PG. It's the fact that all of the marketing made this seem like it was something for children. And that goes with all of the merchandising. They merchandised the heck out of Gizmo and this film. And everything was definitely directed towards children. We had everything from breakfast cereals to tie-in promotions with fast food restaurants and even toys. If you just take a look at some of the advertisements running on TV at the time, I think you can see it's clear that they made all this stuff for kids. There's something special for your kids at Hardee's. With any sandwich, fries, and soft drink, get a Gremlin storybook and record for 99 cents or less plus tax. Collect all five of these read-along stories about Gizmo and his friends. It's here, Gremlin books. It's here, records, too. Cause you love Gizmo, and Gizmo loves you. Now it's... So LJN was the toy company who was awarded the license to produce action figures and other toys based on this new Gremlins film. And if you just even look at the print ad for this, you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Gremlins, the movie that has kids going wild in the aisles. Maybe not necessarily wild in the way that they're saying here. I think it's more in the sense of, oh my God, mom, what are we watching right now? Look, I love Gremlins. I've loved Gremlins for a very long time, but I can admit that even as a kid, the theme song alone was enough to scare me. I mean, it's a great theme song, right? 
meow, 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 meow. But it's, it's kind of gives you that creep factor a little bit. So LJN produced the toys and they released uh, a slew of different products, including posable gremlin action figures, bendy figures, wind up toys, and the coolest of those being the large scale articulated stripe figure. And that brings us to what we are taking a look at today. See, recently when I visited Dallas Vintage Toys, Sean showed me this incredible pickup that he just brought back to the store. He got in touch with a former LJN employee who reached out stating that he had a bunch of stuff that he was looking to part with. So Sean hopped in his car and made the trip to meet this guy who was on the other side of the country as I take it. Uh, when he got there, he picked up a lot of really cool stuff from the guy, including this really amazing one-of-a-kind piece right here. What we're about to take a look at is the original display from New York Toy Fair back when they revealed their upcoming Gremlins toy line. This is amazing and it's so incredible that it survived in this condition all of these years. So this thing is in a giant wooden crate that has actual padlocks on here. So you can imagine that this was like a whole thing. They would do this amazing revealing demonstration for all of the retailers that were coming in to purchase these products. You can actually unlock the real metal padlocks. And when you lift this open, it reveals the Gremlins logo at the top. And then panning down, you've got this amazing display featuring an upcoming selection of Gremlins merchandise. Now alone, this is an amazing display. I mean, this is a homemade, built, heavy wood piece uh, that is beautifully constructed, very unique. I'm willing to bet they only made one of these, and here it is right here. And looking at the product on the inside is pretty cool too, because Upon a closer inspection, you can tell that this is all pre-production pieces. And they've got a sampling of all of the different products that they were going to be releasing with their Gremlins line. You've got the bendy figures in here, which if you see, it's not even made of a bendy material yet. That Gremlin in there is resin and hand painted. So it is absolutely a prototype of what would go on to be the bendy figure. We've got the hatchlings, which were incredibly cool little features where you would drop the little egg cocoon thing in water and it would hatch open to give you a minifigure. Really perfect toy for a Gremlins movie. But you can see there's some differences here too. For instance, that little egg is absolutely hand painted and the paint job is a little different than the final product. There's a little more detail on the eyes. The windups are incredibly cool. And I'm not even sure if these are full manufactured windups yet. The gremlin sitting on the bar stool doesn't quite look like he has his articulation worked in yet. By the way, he is my favorite of the batch. I can't believe they made a toy of a gremlin sitting on a bar stool, holding a mug of beer and smoking a cigar. That's incredible. In fact, I thought this was so amazing, I tried to look this up to buy one after the fact, and it turns out he might be one of the rarer and more expensive Gremlins toys uh, if I'm going by current eBay prices. Yeesh. On the bottom there, you can see our posable gizmo figures. We got one of the smaller scale ones and then two of the larger scale ones. I think both of those large scale ones are the same figure. Uh, they must have just decided to put two of them in the case to round it out a little bit. Those also do look like pre-production figures. But of course, the coolest thing in this case, in my opinion, is the pre-production version of that large scale stripe figure, which is an amazing figure in this particular line. One of the reasons I find this entire thing so fun is that this is the second time I've seen a piece of Gremlins toy history this year. Earlier in the year, I visited my good friend Jerry, and in that walk through his collection, he showed me that he has the original steel molds for this particular Stripe's head. And we took a look at that up close. Now there's a couple of these out there. I've actually seen some of them on the market before, um, but this was amazing to see up close and in person. And now here we are at Dallas Vintage Toys, where Sean is showing me this amazing hand-painted version of this upcoming Stripe figure that they showed way back at New York Toy Fair, probably in 84. 
you can look at this and tell pretty easily that this is pre-production because the paint job is really good. You can tell it's hand painted. Not quite a final piece yet, but it is absolutely amazing to see. So this right here is a really incredible piece of toy history and of Gremlins history. I absolutely love knowing that this stuff is still out there and has survived after all these years, especially since we hear so many stories from toy companies in the 80s where once they were done with stuff like this, they usually just threw it away because it was, you know, it was the job, it was done, they didn't need it anymore. They didn't think about preserving history. They didn't think we would grow up and still care about this stuff all these years later. But this particular LJN employee held onto this for years, obviously kept it in good condition, uh, and that is really, really amazing to see. Now, at the time of me filming this, Sean did not know exactly what he was planning to do with it yet. He did discuss maybe setting it up as a display in the shop, which I think would be awesome. So uh, I don't know exactly where it's going to end up, but I'm very thankful to Sean for allowing me to document it so that we can show the world how cool stuff like this can be, especially when it's been preserved for all these years. I've said this many times before, but this is the kind of thing that I love about this hobby. This toy history keeps me so excited and so engaged. Knowing that there's still stuff like this out there makes all of this so much fun. Thank you guys for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed this little look at some Gremlins toy history. Uh, it excited me a lot seeing it, so I wanted to share that with all of you. I don't know if this is gonna be something that everybody else cares about, but I'm certain that there are some of you out there who are just like me and love seeing stuff like this. Um, so thank you guys so very much for watching, and hey, how did you feel when Gremlins came out? Were you a kid when this movie came out? Did it scare you? Did it excite you? Did you want the toys but couldn't have them because your parents said no? I want to hear your gremlin stories. Leave those in the comments down below. Thank you guys so very much for watching, and until next time.